So, hemostasis basically refers to the body's ability to prevent blood loss. And it's often a topic that, that people find fairly difficult to understand and, and quite confusing. And what I want to do is, right at the start, I just want to go over two important principles that I think help have certainly helped me understand the ideas behind hemostasis. And the first one that I want to talk about and get us to understand is the idea that, that a spectrum has to exist. Yes, the body wants to prevent hemorrhage, but this isn't a straightforward thing to achieve without also considering that it has to simultaneously avoid thrombosis. These can be considered, considered to be two ends of the same spectrum, two extremes of the same spectrum. At one end you have the, body, the blood not clotting sufficiently and allowing hemorrhage, and at the other end we have the blood clotting too vigorously and causing excessive thrombosis. And both of these are, uh, will have negative effects on the body. So the blood has to achieve, with its hemostasis mechanisms, a fine balance between these two, two extremes. And it does this by using um, opposing factors, which we'll discuss in more detail as we go through. But at the start, these are anticoagulants. Anticoagulants, and these are opposed by um, procoagulants. Procoagulants, and this is the central, a central point of hemostasis itself, in that this equilibrium exists, and the blood wants to be in a central state between hemorrhage and thrombosis, two extremes which are not uh, have negative impacts upon the body and achieve this by a balance between anticoagulants and procoagulants which exist in an equilibrium to achieve this steady state. And this is really the central point of hemostasis that that everything else will, 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 will go into more detail about how this is achieved but this is a central point an equilibrium exists between anticoagulants and procoagulants to achieve a balanced central state between excessive hemorrhage and excessive thrombosis. The second point that I want to talk about is just two ideas that, that are important to how this is achieved and they're ideas that you will have heard of before. The first is positive feedback. Positive feedback and this is of course um, balanced out by negative feedback and these are ideas that are common to physiology and that you will have come across before. Um, firstly to talk about negative feedback Negative feedback is, is basically what we've described in the above situation, um, uh, equilibrium and um, uh, the balance between two ends of, 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 of the same spectrum. If it moves away from this equilibrium, negative feedback has to come into place and move the equilibrium back to a central point by negatively feeding back to what, whatever process is, is making the change happen. So we've just described it, the negative feedback that, that has to exist in the hemostasis mechanisms and this is achieved by the balance between anticoagulants and procoagulants. However, a central point of hemostasis is positive feedback and this is because hemostasis, unlike other, well, like some other uh, physiological conditions, it has to be a rapid process. If you picture an injury to a blood vessel um, you don't want to stay in this steady state for long. You want a rapid move towards the thrombosis end of the spectrum to, to prevent blood loss. And to achieve this in equilibrium, um, it has to be achieved by positive feedback. Positive feedback means a process which feeds back onto itself and accelerates itself. 
So in the concept of hemostasis, it is where uh, a very a small trigger and small shift towards the procoagulant end of the spectrum feeds back to speed up the procoagulant shift. And this allows a rapid shift away from the central steady state to cause thrombosis, to protect and prevent blood loss, um, and achieve hemostasis. And this positive feedback, it will be a reoccurring theme throughout the entire hemostasis mechanism, how, throughout the entire hemostasis chapter, because positive feedback is, is used so frequently um, by the body um, for this purpose. But overall, it is still a negative feedback mechanism. Yes, it uses positive feedback um, actions to, to, do, to achieve this rapidly, but there's an overriding negative feedback to move the equilibrium back to this central steady state and achieve the balance that, that usually exists between anticoagulants and procoagulants. So as a quick summary then of, of, of the two ideas that I want to talk to want to make sure we really know before we continue. Uh, the first is the idea that the hemostasis is a spec is a balance, it's an equilibrium between anticoagulants and procoagulants. And this is to prevent the body experiencing the two extremes of, of, of this spectrum we described, excessive hemorrhage or excessive thrombosis. To achieve this it uses negative feedback mechanisms as a balance between anticoagulant and procoagulants. However, to function effectively to prevent blood loss, it has to be able to rapidly move away from this central point to achieve thrombo to, to, to move towards a thrombosis state, to, to move towards a more, pro, a more procoagulant state to achieve the hemostasis. And it does this by using positive feedback mechanisms that rapidly promote their own action and allow a quick control of blood loss. And we will go into these points in more detail through the other chapters.